I want to thank Anna for uh, the organization of this closing uh, conference of the project. I want to thank Anna for uh, conducting the project in this uh, for this past three years and, uh, and a half. And uh, let's say we are the, the <coughs> geography group, so this will be more about space than about anything else. Not, not, not clearly economy. And there are going to be two. Uh, can you speak up, please? Louder. <coughs> okay. I'll try. If, if you don't listen, tell me. Uh, I was saying that we. I was thanking Anna that, that I hope you have, you have listened. The other thing is, as the geographers of the team, though there is a very interesting work doing about space and economy done here in Coimbra, we try to present things about changes in the Lisbon metropolitan area. There are two issues here which are not absolutely true in this title. The first one, and you'll see, I'll go back to this at the end, is the term contemporary. You'll see that there is a little twist, a little problem with, with contemporary. And the second issue is financialization. I won't talk much about financialization because, well, the project is about financialization. There are experts of financialization here. So that bridge will be made by others, not but in dialogue with us, and not so much within the, the presentation. Now, th there is an empirical aim, which is to analyze the social spatial segregation in, in Lisbon. We we'll use the two classical uh, groups, or social groups, not <coughs> classes, which are social professional groups and foreign populations. And we we'll use census data because we want to work at a micro scale, and we don't have other sources to work at micro scale than the census. So if you want to go to, go to a level that is below the municipality, that means the parish or the census tract, we need to use census data because we don't have other, other sources. Now, th there are a couple of theoretical assumptions, or in our theoretical aim. So the first thing is that social spatial segregation, as the people in the room know, are normally understood as a kind of special expression of exclusion, or at least it expresses this differential access to urban resources. So the segregated groups are the ones which have a limited access to uh, urban resources, and in this time's uh, language, we can say that the, the ones which have a right in the city that is <coughs> diminished, that is not as equal to the average population that lives in the city. The second thing is, Several people have been writing uh, along the last 10, 12 years about the dissociation between housing conditions and housing segregation, which means that despite uh, some groups which are unprivileged remaining in poor housing conditions, which can be measured by uh, things like um, a concentration, concentration of people in dwellings, uh, limited facilities in dwellings, time construction of dwellings, physical condition of dwellings, despite several groups, namely migrants in several cities, remaining in these poor conditions of housing, the segregation levels in some cities have actually declined, which challenges this assumption of connection between higher degrees of special segregation, <coughs> for instance, the non-European migrants, and worse uh, housing conditions, because the groups are more scattered now than they were in the past. Now, the third idea is that there is, several studies have shown that at least until 10 years ago, there was lower social segregation when we use the usual segregation indexes to measure it in most southern European cities when compared to northern European ones. Things have changed <coughs> in these times of higher socialization. I mean, there are some convergence in the trend. But, but this sustains the idea of social urban fragmentation which was developed here in the late 90s and, uh, and the beginning of this century, which m meant that in contiguous areas could live groups which were socially very distant. Which means not, not exactly in the same building, but in the same block, or in, in blocks which were uh, contiguous. Social groups could, very different social groups could actually live. And finally, this last idea is that when we categorize the welfare regimes into the, the, the usual four clusters that uh, were developed by Esping-Anderson and several others afterwards, normally liberal regimes express 
or the cities of uh, liberal regimes have experience or register higher uh, segregated indexes in for uh, yeah for this higher seg higher social special segregation indexes. Now, having that into consideration, we have tried to join three things, which is the process of housing market liberalization, which has been described just before our presentation, and discussed here in connection with other things. The increasing value of rehabilitation, that is the investment in city center, and contrary to what happened in the 80s, 90s, and the beginning of this, well, the beginning of this century, which was a stage of financialization that was associated to own, uh, own ownership and new housing in the suburbia. We are thinking now in metropolitan terms, so we are thinking in the case of Portugal, is Lisbon metropolitan area, what we could call the paradigmatic example, but we find other examples, for instance, in the Oporto metropolitan area, and eventually here in Coimbra, in, in this area, though I know less about Coimbra. But there is an increasing value of rehabilitation, especially after the crisis, but started a little bit before, in 2004 and 2005, when it was clear that the offer of housing at the time was exceeding the demand, the internal demand that we have. This was partially solved by the entry of foreign capital, and especially the entry of foreign demand, <coughs> potentialized by things like the golden visas, which were created in 2015, but also the fiscal benefits to EU residents, a system that was created in 2009. Uh, well, not just EU residents, because it's based in the non-duplication of, uh, well, of paying taxes, of tax agreements. Now, this is the second pillar, which is uh, a pillar based in where we invest, and rehabilitation is normally where the, well, where the housing is already built, particularly in city centres and historical centres. The third thing, and I simplify this very much because I'm in a place where uh, economists know the details that I don't know, which are <coughs> changes in, in the economy. And this is just to underline one thing, is that the labour market changes are highly responsible for the increasing needs of immigrants in this country for the past 20 years. There was, in the, uh, in the hardest moment of the crisis, there was clearly a shift in our net migration. It became negative. Now it's positive again. But all the uh, projections that we do to the Portuguese economy in terms of labour market needs show that there are uh, spaces which won't be fulfilled by the internal offer of workers and would have to use uh, foreign workers. Furthermore, we, with these transactions of people which circulate within the EU but also to other countries, in, in a very small economy like the Portuguese one, it's unavoidable, I would say, the arrival of immigrants. Now, they are changing, but there, are, there is an importance of immigration which clearly has privileged the Lisbon metropolitan area. Now, there are other places as well, but more than 50% of the foreigners registered in this country live in the Lisbon metropolitan area. We'll see that in a minute. The other thing is changes in social professional structures, and we'll talk about this in a few minutes. Now, there is also methodological aim. We can say that in geography we are in a kind of digital turn, and especially my younger colleagues, which are in the back of the room, they pushed me very much to explore the potentialities of analysis at micro level. So that is, at the parish level, the neighborhood, the block. I, I won't talk about the block, but we are trying now to explore data for some buildings and to see the stories of the buildings, stories in terms of who invests on these buildings, how much the value of the buildings has increased in the past four or five years, and what is responsible for this process. We won't bring this here today, but is, let us say, the, most, the smallest unit we are trying to analyze using this uh, methodology, methodologies that they are proposing. The final thing is, now we are in a moment where, where some people talk about the science of cities, for instance, which, which was for us was something like urban geography. But anyway, there is the, the science of the city, and there is this development of urban analytics. And a lot of talk about urban analytics, and a lot of my young colleagues actually do what we can call urban analytics. What we try to join here is the critical issue. It's to do critical urban analytics. Not just going back to the old new geography times of uh, f making the cities more functional, which, which is a, a good purpose because uh, apparently it makes life easier for everybody, but to assume that despite being more functional, there are still extraordinary places. Yes, cities are extraordinary places, but very unequal. And there are processes going on 
which makes them eventually even more unequal, and we have to be critical on the simple uh, goal of making cities just more functional. So these were our aims, this was our simple methodology, so concerning the social <coughs> groups with the part, it is census data, like I told you, we depart from the 27 original groups and then we end up for comparative purposes of six groups. Then we use municipalities, then we use rings about the city centre to see peripheralization trends and concentration disconcentration. And then we try to find out more or less spaces which corresponds to what we call the parishes with the, with the challenging parishes in terms of uh, social urban concern. Then concerning the foreign population, we retain four big groups, the Portuguese speaking African countries plus Brazil, so it's a lot blues of the world, Europe, China, and then India and Pakistan. And then we do more or less the same reading. Then we use a set of uh, methods to analyze dispersal, uh, relationship between groups, etc. etc. I, I won't go into detail on this. The one of my colleagues would be very happy if you want to discuss some of the methods with him. <laughs> no, not, not with me now. <laughs> okay, so the, the first thing is the six groups that we have. And this is the evolution for the entire Lisbon metropolitan area. So they're quite obvious. One thing is, uh, these are written in Portuguese, but you understand, it's the very highly skilled people connected, you know, bosses of big enterprises, uh, big managers, etc. These are liberal professions, independent skilled professionals mainly. This is intermediate professionals, and this is the majority of uh, the workers, which correspond to service and commerce workers, middle skilled, often now <coughs> actually with university degrees. In 2001, several of these have university degrees. And then, these are the professions in decline, which are skilled workers and unskilled workers. Those ones are mostly connected to manufacturing, but especially to construction. Now, what we do see is obviously an increase in groups 1, 2, 3, <coughs> and 4. 3 actually with a decline here, because group 3 includes, for instance, uh, things like the usual small bosses of uh, you know shops and so on, which experience some decline, and uh, also some other categories of independent professionals that working usually work on in, on repair things, which also have reduced due to the change of offer in this, this kind of job. So th this is a group which actually is more or less stable, contrary to this one that increased at least two. Obviously, the other two groups decline. So low skilled and unskilled workers, especially after 2001, because between 1991 and 2001 there was an increase, both of the groups declined. Now, there was a thesis about polarization that could be seen also for Portugal, but we think that after 2001, the idea of polarization reduced. Though, there must be said something. In 2001, we are already in the beginning of the crisis. So, the fact that, for instance, the number of people registered as a, in social professional groups by INE is affected by the crisis. This would, would, employment would reduce in the following years, but 2001 was already a bad year. So this reduction is also associated to the specific time of the census, which makes the analysis a little bit less trickier, let us say. So in our idea, there is an absence of polarization, there is a technological incorporation that strengthens that when, with the beginning of the century and allows the reduction of the less low-skilled groups, groups sorry, and there is um, the industrialization that came from the late 20th century but continues at the beginning of, of this century. Then there are some evidences of the economic crisis, so the limited, very limited growth in employment actually declined in some of these, these groups. Very strong in construction, was already in crisis in 2001, and the increase in the industrialization. So this is a general picture. Now, when looking to space, this is a complex uh, table, so I won't read it all. It's just, if, if we take the extreme groups, what is interesting about group one, which are the highest skilled, of course, the lowest percentage. One would expect that they, they increase slightly along <coughs> the, these 20 years, 
And they are in what we, those who know the Lisbon metropolitan area, they concentrate in the good areas in between Copenhagen. So it's Lisbon, and as we will see, especially West Lisbon and Cascais and the West. And there was a clear increase in the percentages in these areas. So they are more concentrated in the areas, contrary to trends that say that the groups tend to disperse. So this is the first sign that there was not actually dispersal. There was some between 91 and 2001, but not after the beginning of the century. And the second thing is, when we look into the groups which are the less privileged ones, we see that they live in the periphery. We have better, better data on this and more clear ones, but what we do see is that there is a trend of these two groups to be more apart. And of course, the groups of the middle are dominant and are in other <coughs> places. Let, 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 let's read it like this because it's, I think it's much more clear than this table, which is important to show uh, the detail of, the, of these elements, but not, not so easy to do. Now, if we look into the... This is Lisbon, for those who are not familiarized with, uh, with, with Lisbon metropolitan area. Lisbon metropolitan area, Lisbon, what we can call the first crown, which is three kilometers from the city center and the second crown, which is at 15 kilometers of the, the city center, straight line. Uh, what we do see is a progressive peripheralization supported by the middle classes. As we'll see today, <coughs> it's groups three and four that actually push towards the growth of the third wing. In association also with group five, which are the skilled workers. The difference is that group five was the most important in 1991 and is still the most important but there was an, an important decrease of groups 3 and 4 which are now very close to group 2 and 5. The second thing is clearly an higher concentration in the first ring of groups 1 and 2. So those who, who live in Lisbon, and there is this whole discussion about the expulsions of the population from the city centre and so on, is, not, it cannot be confirmed in 2001 but there were already signs of this element. One, one of the issues is that group one, so the ones which are the most affluent of all, is the only group that actually increases slightly in the first ring. So eventually there is no increase in segregation. We'll see that in a minute. But there is a, an higher peripheralization of everybody, but more limited for the groups with the highest incomes, or at least with the highest capital, social professional capital. And then, there is a shrinking of the presence of workers, both skilled and unskilled. <coughs> we can see, for instance, that group six, here, was still very close to group three and four, in terms of percentage. And it declines, declines, and though the differences are not very big, it became the second smallest group in percentage in the first group. So, when we look into, uh, it's, not, it's impossible to read all these maps in detail, but what we can see, this is group one. So the highest, the, the most qualified of, of all, and the ones with higher responsibilities in terms of managing enterprises, etc. What we do see is the scattering actually reduces a little bit, with the exception of some places in the South Bank. So here we can see that the places where these people live, correspond to an area in the north of Lisbon, which would be Avenidas uh, Novas, Tulheiras, the classical thing. Then there is the expansion in Oeiras municipality, which is actually the area where a set of new urbanizations for this group have expanded. And then the classical presence in the Cascais municipality, but in the good part, because there is a rear of the Cascais municipality, as we'll see in a minute. So apparently, actually, they are more concentrated now than they were in 91. 91 is here, so. If you look into group two, it's very similar, but they are more. They are more or less in the same place, so the same areas of Lisbon, the same expansion to the west. And this is the group that grows in numbers much more than group one. These are the new managers, the new classes associated to for instance, these, these times where management, for instance, increases, and a lot of people want to study management and economics, which are professions of future and very successful, correspond to these groups that live in, this, in these areas, actually. And there is some scattering now in some particular places in the South Bank, which also 
uh, show the history of the urban expansion. But the urban expansion is much more clear when we look into this group, for instance, which is group four. <coughs> they are much more scattered. So the expansion of the metropolitan area clearly is based on group three and group four. If we look into group three, they are scattered everywhere. And the most, when you look into the areas where the overrepresentation of the group is higher, they are very, very scattered. So they are responsible for the expansion for the third ground, here, Mafra, which is a champion of growth in terms of the municipalities of this metropolitan area. Or here in Sesimbra, Sesimbra, Seychelles, <coughs> Yalmava. When we look into this group, the difference is this is the largest group of all, is they clearly follow the uh, transport system. So, the Sintra, Cascais, the highway to the north, and then the bridge to the south, and also the expansion here with the new bridge. If we look into this one, it's very didactical, and contribute to this one, which is much more scattered. So, the finally, what happened with the, the last two groups? So we can move directly to the last one. What is interesting in the, the, the low skilled is there is a reduction of the population that belongs to, which is classified as unskilled workers. They have a scattered pattern, but however, yeah, five minutes, okay. They are more concentrated in more recent times. Oh, seven, no? It's okay. And when we look into this group, what we will see is that they are much less scattered than the middle classes. And they still occupy several spaces, not only in the city, there is this line here in the east part, which goes from, let's say, Marvila in the Tagus Bank until the north of Lisbon, the areas of Ameixoeira, for instance. So and this line continues, but if you, if you see, it reduces continuously. Our expectation is with the transformation in the east of Lisbon, induced by what happened in the Expo area, will now be much more reduced. So this, this number of, this line here will have less dots in 2021. We'll see. And then there is this area which is in all our maps, one, it's the south of Lourdes municipality is one of the areas where systematic concentration of unprivileged population in an unprivileged housing condition remains. It's composed by uh, social housing, partially, and by the last uh, slums or slum-like areas that exist in Lisbon. So there is some concentration of this group. And so this idea of having you know, worlds apart, especially for a small, the, the group is smaller than smaller, that is true. <coughs> but the truth is that not, though being smaller, it's now more distant from the average in terms of distribution and housing conditions of, uh, of the population of Lisbon. Now, this is just a small correlation. Correlation in, in terms of geographical distribution. Correlation between the groups and one, group one and two, and that is very interesting, was 0 0.80, 0 0.89, 0 0.92, which means the two highest groups get closer. Contrary, the correlation with groups five and six, which was lower because people don't live, are not scattered around cities, we all know that, was 0 0.7, 0 0.74, 0 0.50, 0 0.61, 0 0.47, 0 0.49. So the distance between the distribution of the groups increases decade after decade, which challenges this idea that there is uh, a reduction in terms of segregation. We, we haven't measured segregation yet. We are doing it now because there was an old complex story to obtain data from the 2001 census with, with email. We have to, several emails coming in. Here. I'll jump this one. And, uh, well, and this, this one is here. And I'll pass to the immigrant groups. Uh, the, the question of immigrant groups is the percentage of immigrants, which is on this line, is much higher than the, is the percentage of uh, foreign population living in the Lisbon metropolitan area. Is always much higher than the percentage of total population living in the Lisbon metropolitan area. And it, it reached the maximum in 2001, which was the maximum of uh, immigrant entries. Then there was a slight reduction. So the world of immigrants is very much Lisbon, or the Lisbon metropolitan area. And uh, what we do see when looking into this, <coughs> this data 
is that there are a few municipalities, we have the map here, where migrants are more represented. So there is this area that involves Lisbon, Amadora, in absolute terms, and uh, uh, also Sintra, in absolute terms. In terms of variation, migrants are now increasing, it's, it corresponds to the uh, cycles, migrants are now increasing more in the second and third crowns. So in areas like Montijo, Palmela, Zimbra, etc. So the idea of peripheralization of migrants is also expressed in this, in this map. Now, th th there are different patterns of distribution. So the old groups of Portuguese <coughs> are closer to, to Lisbon. The new, between commas, migrant groups, like Brazilians, new because they arrived a little bit later and became very important 20 years ago, are much more scattered. And so they feed up the growth in the third crown. Here, in Costa de Caparica, especially in the north of the metropolitan area. The pattern of citizens from EU15, because we didn't want to consider, for instance, Romanians, which is a different pattern, they reproduce exactly, or more or less, they overlap, the pattern shown by groups 1 and 2 in terms of social classes, which is totally expected. So there is some coincidence between the workers and the migrants coming from uh, Portuguese-speaking countries, particularly, and the highly skilled and migrants coming from the EU-15 countries. And then we have more <coughs> complex patterns, but very much concentrated in Lisbon, that correspond over the first crowd, that correspond to the Asians, which they are not exactly the, the middle classes, but they show how the access to some areas here follows a, a pattern that is not the usual occupation of uh, uh, intermedi intermediate spaces of low quality that remain in the periphery, neither the unoccupied spaces in the peri-urban that the Brazilians were, uh, were occupying. So there were other opportunities here, namely in the city center, previously to process of gentrification, <coughs> Indians, Pakistanis and Chinese started to render to buy houses before the rehabilitation processes took place. So they precede the rehabilitation. If we go into the center of Lisbon, we do find this. Yeah, okay. So here we have a segregation index, and what we do see is that segregation has actually declined in most of the groups for between 91 and 2001. Programs like PEAR, which was the, real, the major rehousing program has contributed to that. Uh, the behavior of some groups like the groups from the Palo, in terms of access to housing, following the pattern of the Portuguese, also entering in the home ownership process, lead them to scatter more. And also the increase in numbers of migrants affects the segregation indexes. People who use them know that technically they are very sensitive to the number of the groups. Now, between 2001 and 2011, the, the rehousing program, well, become more or less finished, and uh, then there were all the blocks in terms of access to housing that became more and more harder after 2004, 5, 6, 7, etc. <coughs> and the result was that several groups, especially the ones that were less privileged, like the Eastern Europeans and the Palop citizens, which are the Portuguese speaking African people coming, well, the Portuguese African, African people, have seen the, again the segregation, the segregation indexes increasing. So, when we cross segregation indexes with dwellings with precarious conditions and we explore this with some particular groups like the Palop citizens, we do see that in several cases we find areas, which are these red dots here, where we have an association between an overrepresentation of the population from the Palop and an overrepresentation of dwellings with precarious conditions. There is a, a general improvement in these dwellings. So the reduction of dwellings with precarious conditions is continuous since 1991. But the places where it's still high are places where we do find normally concentrations of immigrant population, either in the peri-urban, either in the areas inside the urban and suburban fabric which changed less. Now, the examples of areas, these are the areas where this happened not only with migrant population, but also with unprivileged social professional groups. So one of the examples is this parish of Fonsueva, I'll, I'll talk 
for most of the people it doesn't say anything, but I'll show it to that. Caperica, for most of the people, this does say something. And then we have a plus sound, which is also very different. What, what are these this places? So a plus sound is the example of social housing. So this is a neighborhood where we have the continuous concentration of population in unprivileged conditions. And this is one of the examples where we find dwellings with poor conditions and population with limited social, social, social conditions. And the second example, and this is suburban, this is also suburban, is the remainings of slums. This is a slum in Costa de Caparica, another of the dwellings. And in both cases, here and here, we have over-representation of foreign population and descendants of foreign population. And then the other two examples are the peri which corresponds to a Fonsuayo or to a Zuayo. So it's here and here. So are the areas which are in the limits of the peri which are former rural areas <coughs> which have not transformed completely and where the conditions of the housing are normally poor and the transition of the population didn't occur yet. We expect that this area, especially in Fonsuayo, have changed substantially with new demand over the last seven years. So what are the people with new demands? And I'm finished. So there is a general improvement in housing conditions. And the Lisbon expanded until 2001 clearly. So there is a clear privatization supported by a model of new house with home ownership strategies. So Lisbon, kept, Lisbon City kept losing population and the crowns of the periphery have increased, first the second, more recently the third. And this was supported by the middle classes buying cows of this strategy of home ownership. The third thing is trends in ethnic segregation are mixed. So it's not clear that there is desegregation. And apparently after 2000, when the programs that could mitigate this came to an end, segregation is somehow back. There is a stronger special segregation of social groups, but there are this separation that we see, but there are elements of social special fragmentation. <coughs> we do see that in some cases, the groups actually coexist. And when we look into the, that pattern, if I remember you, of group six into the city, we did see that it was scattered in several areas, not just outside Lisbon, but also still inside Lisbon. So there are spaces that sometimes we can consider that there are spaces of persistence or spaces of resistance of this group. But eventually, what is happening now, we lead the group entirely to the periphery. Finally, what we do see is that there is a polarization of the extremes. So the less affluent groups, which were in a bad situation, are apparently now in an even worse situation, that is, more apart from the urban resources. <coughs> the two caveats that we have, well, three caveats that we have on this, is first the caveat of time. And an analysis that ends in 2001, of course, the 2011, sorry, doesn't capture a lot of the processes that are taking place since the last 10 years. So much of the processes that have became more visible, especially after 2014-15, are not captured in an analysis like this. So this points eventually some trends, but it can be reversed by what is taking place now. The second caveat is the data exploitation. We are not exploring the data, we haven't explored the data enough to have a good reading of what is happening. And uh, finally, we'll, the other element of the analysis is to pass from the neighborhood actually to the block, or to the block of apartments. Because we think that if you want to add process of financialization here, and to see how speculation has actually taken place. We need to see other kinds of data which are not census data, and see these transactions, and who's actually buying and living in those places. And they have the incorporation, not just of the labor migrants, but especially of <coughs> the new immigrant groups which are buying houses, and living in these houses, in the Lisbon metropolitan area. Thank you, and sorry.